Hello again. I'm trying to stick with my goal of making a video each month. So here I am at the last week of the month getting this together. This month I wanted to talk about why I think it is a useful thing to learn how to draw even if you're not interested in art as a profession. Um, the reason this is on my mind is I have been teaching um, a beginning level drawing class at the local community college for a while now and um, I, I'm about to start it up again because it's um, so right now it's August 2019 for anyone who might be listening to this later and so we're coming into the fall semester and I'm going to be starting teaching again and I want to talk about why I am passionate about this and why I make time for teaching this class um, even though I am really busy, I have kids, I have work, things that I want to get done. Um, so I think that drawing is a useful and beneficial life skill. It's not just a professional skill. And one of the great things about it is there's a low barrier to entry. Um, all you really need is a pencil on paper and like a drawing surface and something to look at to draw. And so most people can can manage to get those things together. And so I think it's just great in that way. It's not like, I don't know, it's not like you need to go buy an expensive musical instrument or anything like that. Most of us can get a pencil and paper. Also, um, art, drawing, learning to draw is um, kind of similar to meditation in that um, you have to basically um, ignore or kind of turn off that inner monologue, all of those thoughts that are going through your, your brain, and um, just tune into the, the abstract shapes and um, you know lines and angles that you see in front of you and, and understand them and translate those onto paper. And um, I, I, most people, I'm sure, have heard of all the benefits of meditation. And I feel like drawing is in that same category, that you're, you're quieting your mind and getting rid of all that inner, inner monologue. Um, one, one of um, my favorite entry-level drawing books, and one that a lot of people refer to, is Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And she talks a little bit more about this if you, you're curious about it, but just how um, your, your left brain or your analytical brain, it, that's all the, the verbal stuff going on in your mind versus your right brain or your more creative abstract brain. That, that's um, kind of the mode that you need to get into in order to draw accurately. Um, along with the whole meditation thing, um, I think it's a great um, help in learning to, to focus and um, not always be jumping from to thing to thing. And um, I know everyone's saying, oh, kids these days, they're, you know, they're obsessed with their social media and their phones, but um, I think it's kind of true. I think that it, it's good practice to... Um, sit down and focus on something for an extended period of time and um, not just be entertained but to create. So on that note, um, along with always being on your phones and always consuming this content on the media, um, it, it is so easy to consume, 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 consume. And I do that a lot and, and it's great, um, but it, I think that we need to, to produce sometimes. And obviously it's a lot more difficult to produce and it takes a lot more time. But taking that time to, to produce content, even if you don't share it with anyone, this isn't about sharing something online, but just making something instead of just looking at what someone else has made um, is a, a great uh, thing that we don't take time for um, necessarily very much. I also think that drawing helps us to, when you, when you really sit down and learn to draw, you, you help develop a growth mindset, which I talked more about in my last video, if you're curious. But it really is something that 
you can learn and get better at um, over time. And I feel that um, drawing is especially good for that because the results really are visible. You can you can take a drawing that you did a couple months ago and put it over one, you know, put it next to one that you did just now and say, look, I learned something. And so it's nice that you can have a, a really visual, very obvious um, progress when you're working hard at it. Um, another interesting one I'm, I'll bring up again. Um, so I mentioned Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. Another book by her that um, I don't hear about as much but is also very interesting is called Drawing on the Artist Within. And um, I, I also really recommend that. I think it's very interesting. And in it she um, talks about the creative process and a lot of other things. But specifically in the creative process, what she did is she read um, read the, the autobiographies of um, pe creative people, people who made creative breakthroughs. And I'm not talking in just about artists, about um, scientists and inventors and people who um, made di great discoveries, etc and trying to study and figure out what process they went through to create and make these breakthroughs. And basically what she puts forward is that um, you need both sides of the brain. So in the first book I mentioned, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, she talks about how we spend a lot of our time and our education um, focusing on and strengthening the left side, the verbal side, the logical side. Um, and we kind of neglect developing and nurturing the right side, which is the more abstract and creative um, side of the brain. But um, she, she outlines in this book how the creative process has different steps and it moves back and forth between some steps of this process of creating or discovering or making breakthroughs, you need that logical right side of the brain that we spend so much time developing, but there are certain parts of it that um, require that right side to, to be developed. In particular, um, kind of the climax of that is the eureka moment that is um, a, a right brained step of the process. She talks about how she was reading these um, autobiotic autobiographies and trying to figure out you know what's going on in, in the brain in this process and and then it's like she she saw the words jumping out of the page from uh, in front of her that when these people described that moment when they figured it out they described it visually. It wasn't that the the verbal words um, you know, came to them, you know, in this inner monologue, it was like, oh, and then I had a picture in my, in my mind of what happened, or, or something along those lines, that, um, you know, we, we need that, that right side of the brain, the, the creative, um, abstract, visual side, in order to make these breakthroughs. So drawing is a way to develop and get in, in tune with that side of the brain. And so, uh, I think, um, you know, according to that, that's why we call people who can draw creative. Um, I, I think that uh, it doesn't make sense, actually, on the surface of it when you think about it. You say, oh, you draw so well, you must be creative. And, you know, what, what you're doing is you're re reproducing what you see in front of you. Um, with, you know, usually when people are complimenting drawing, they're complimenting a, a realistic rendition. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense like, well, that, that's not technically creative, like that you're reproducing what you see in front of you. But what you're doing is you're, you're exercising and training that right side of the brain, which does indeed help you to be creative. And the last thing that I wanted to bring up was um, a couple of kind of special experiences that I have had. Um, as a drawing teacher, when students have come up to me and told me how they have, um, you know, found it useful, not just in, you know, feeling satisfied that they've learned to draw, which, which is true, but, um, for example, I had one student who, um, one night she, she stayed later after class, after class to, to be able to talk to me and share an experience, and she told me about how she, worked with um, women in difficult situations uh, um, for her 
job and that she had been um, telling them about the principles that she was learning um, in learning how to draw and, and talking to them how, about how it uh, applied in their situation and, and could help them look at things in a different way. Um, and, and again, um, this happened again with another student who um, I believe she was a therapist and she told me about how um, she had, had brought up um, what I had been teaching with learning to draw um, with, with one of her, her therapy clients. I think specifically what she had brought up as um, when teaching perspective, I found myself saying something over and over. It's funny how when you teach, you kind of have these phrases and these mantras that you keep saying. And um, what I, I, I kept repeating was, you have to doubt your assumptions that uh, you think that things ought to look a certain way, you think that you're seeing a certain thing, you assume that without checking. And um, usually, especially um, when you're first learning to draw, you're wrong. That we make these assumptions of how things appear, and they aren't really that way, and we don't think to check. And um, she, she mentioned that, um, you know, that was really interesting to her just um, in her own life, but how she was, you know, talking about it to her clients um, and how it applied to, to you know, their, their situation of, um, I, I don't know, she didn't tell me anything else about the client. She, she just told me that, you know, she had shared that thing that I had said and how it had been uh, helpful to her and also about, um, you know, learning about how um, abstraction is an es essential part of realism, which is an entire lecture that I can't go into right now, um, really changed um, the way she saw things around her and even, you know, art that she had put in her home. Um, you know, she she got it because she liked it and it, it looked like a representational thing, but she realized that it really was the case that, um, you know, the, the, the shapes and colors were essential and um, she saw the world differently. So let me know what you think. Um, was any of this interesting to you? Um, do you agree? Do you think that um, you know drawing is beneficial and uh, helpful, even if you're not interested in it as a profession? Um, I hope that these sketches have been interesting to you. None of them are finished artwork yet. <laughs> um, they're, they're all just um, sketches. I generally, I sketch and procreate, which is a program these are done in, and then finish in Illustrator. And so that's why um, it's like that. Anyway, leave comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks.